Okay, I've been waiting for this day for a while, guys. This is my uh, new stump to mount my old cold saw anvil on. And uh, considering I used a 14 inch chainsaw to cut this 15 inch log, and I sharpened my chainsaw chains manually, I got a pretty good straight edge there. And sitting on the level floor, it's pretty good. Try the other way, just for fun. Okay, well that's different, never do that. We'll try this way. So it's okay, right? Doesn't get any better than that. <clears throat> so the rule for well, there's no rules, right? This was all learned over centuries. This kind of stuff goes back before all of us were born. So I'm going to move the anvil <laughs> carefully. Remembering I'm 60. Onto the, onto the stump. And they say that when you reach your fist down like that and stand to your side, that the top of the anvil should hit your hit your fist. So I already pre-measured everything, and we're within, oh, I don't know, zero inches. But isn't that going to be a beautiful thing? I love it. Now I can adjust it this way or that. <clears throat> but now the th what I'm going to do is fire up my little electric chainsaw and I'm just going to buzz as much bark off that as I can so it doesn't leave that messy stuff all over the garage forever. So I might take you outside and we'll do that together out under the trees where the won't make a difference if we make a mess or not. So Let me just get that set, set up. Alright guys, we're we good. Excuse me. There we go. I'm just going to start buzzing the bark off here. I'll be right back. Okay. Fine. I'm getting better at it as I go. Well, you guys get the picture. Well, you guys have heard of chainsaw carving. I just made a 
anvil stump. Okay, you guys like Oki Chopper? I know you'd love to be able to do this, but you have to feel sorry for my wife because I'm the one that's whining at night. Oh, that's the last time that anvil gets moved on to that stump. I hope. So now I've got these uh, thin straps I'm going to measure and the strap that's going to go on here is going to be something like, oh, we might as well use the anvil to make the, make the bends, eh? Maybe like that. Something like that. I think that's going to be two, yes, it's going to be two, there we go. I bought these, not because they're six inches long, I bought them because this is spruce, right? And it's going to check. Check is where you get that split in the log that makes it easier to split when it's dry. But I thought if I went at different angles with these bolts that it would improve the checking on the top. All right, okay guys, step two. I don't know if that's tight enough. Oh yeah. We're going to do the other side then, so we can still bang the anvil this way. Alright, we'll put the, uh, the opposite strap on the other side. Alright, there we are. And it can only improve from here. If I find that these are starting to loosen off, I can just uh, make ones out of uh, sheet metal. I've uh, just walked this way. I've got some stuff here that would be perfect. Right there. So where do you put it? Well, I've got a spot. Right over there. So just hang tight. I must be quite a sight. Where am I shooting to? Over there. That's a perfect place to keep an anvil in. You just roll it out when you need it. So back out. These were the legs I was going to use. They're for deck railings, but I decided not to. And these were some more brackets that I had out. Just miscellaneous stuff, you know. I'm sure a gentleman on the farm uh, 80 years ago when he was mounting that vise probably did something similar. So thanks for watching this, Tubes. It was a lot of fun. I got my I keep saying vice, don't I? <laughs> no, I got enough vices. So anyway, that was a joke. Uh, anyway, we'll talk to you guys later. We'll Alright guys, I'm very unhappy with these. They're too stretchy. So I'm going to go to something simple like that. It's fairly thick. fit on there a quarter inch there we go and it's going to be the width of the uh, leg on the anvil different setup so let's get the rest of these three drilled 
I just cut them out of a piece of that sheet steel I showed you guys the other day, right over there. And I'll be back when I'm finished drilling. All right, guys, I'm half done. I've got one done on that side and one done on that side. And I think that's going to be so strong, it'll be just great. We used a lot of uh, dual anchors like that when I used to work, and uh, they're much like a shackle on an axle, shackle bolt. So I've got two more to do, and we'll show you the end result. Yes, so this anvil means a lot to me. Even if I never use it. Like the other there we go. Uh -huh. It's fun. I tell you, that is strong. And one more, I'm going to just spin this. Anchor up one. Perfect. I like it. Now I'm going to leave it for a few days to see which I might round off these edges here so a guy doesn't gonk himself, make him the same shape as the washer. But that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Yeah, that looks much better. And I can tighten them up. No time like the present. There. So I didn't want something factory. I wanted something that would look like an old timer had done it a hundred years ago. Uh, I was going to weld up a stand like on my jack stand there, my jack press, my bench grinder jack press stand, and paint it all up gray and pretty or whatever. But I just thought I wanted something it looked blacksmithish. That's a new word. So thanks for your patience with this one, Tubes.